guys, welcome to Keeping It Simple Crafts. I hope everyone is doing good. Don't forget if you like this video to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share this video, and if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. For this yardstick door swag, you're going to need one yardstick, and I did spray paint mine on one side outside and let it dry. You're going to need two rolls of the 10 inch mesh and this is fabric mesh that I ordered online from Craft Outlet and it's really not the easiest to work with so I don't recommend that particular mesh. You're going to need some pipe cleaners and then you're going to need a long sign and I picked up this welcome sign at Michael's. I tried something a little bit different for this door swag. I love trying new ways of making things so I hope you like this new way. So for this one you're going to want to cut your mesh, your 10 inch mesh, at 33 inches. So we're going to be making the strips a lot longer than normal. So cut at 33 inches, take a strip, kind of roll the end under, and walk your fingers up the center of your mesh. And here you can kind of tell this mesh is a little bit difficult to work with, which I know mesh kind of hangs up on itself, but this one kind of did it more than normal. And then I learned to put some scissors or some weight at the other end, and it works a lot better when you're walking your fingers up the middle. So make a ruffle, and then here's where we're changing it up. Normally I put the pipe cleaners on the yardstick first. We're doing it different. Now you have your ruffle made. Now you're going to grab a pipe cleaner, wrap it around your little ruffle, give it a twist, then you're going to go to the top of your yardstick, move down a couple inches, take your pipe cleaner, and then twist your pipe cleaner around your yardstick. Now you're going to want to fluff your little ruffle, same steps, kind of roll your, you want it, your mesh to curl down toward the table, then kind of roll the edge under, then walk your fingers up the middle of your mesh and make a ruffle. And then what I did, I should have done ribbon on every other ruffle, but I didn't. So I would recommend doing ribbon on every other ruffle and cut the ribbon at about 12 inches. So here I am putting the pipe cleaner around the ruffle. And then I'm going to go back to my yardstick and move down two or three inches and put on my ruffle. So you can make this as full as you want. I do recommend painting the yardstick first. So I move down a couple inches and then I'm adding my ruffle. Now you can squeeze them together or you can move down. Now I did slide the ruffle up a little bit more. So two or three inches apart and I left the yardstick. I did not cut any off this time. Lots of times I cut my yardstick shorter, but this time I left it the full length. So just fluff your little ruffles. Next, I'm cutting my ribbon strips, and I cut my ribbon at eight inches, but it really doesn't show up like I would like for the ribbon to, so I would recommend cutting your ribbon strips at 12 inches and doing them every other ruffle. Don't forget to dovetail the ends, and there's my little helper, Parker. Parker was so cute. He was wanting to lay down in the mesh, so I had to go get him a blanket so that he would leave my mesh alone. So here I'm just grabbing a couple strips of ribbon, adding them on top of the ruffle. Then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner, wrap it around the ribbon tails and the deco mesh, give it a twist, and then I'm going to add it to my yardstick. When I was making my ruffles, I figured out that it's much easier if you put some weight on the other end, like your scissors or something, then kind of curl the end under and walk your fingers up the center. And that way it just helps it to stop tangling up, you know, on itself. Worked much better, but I'd already done a few the other way, but that's okay. You learn as you go. I believe I cut 14 of the ruffles for this door swag. So 14 strips of the 10 inch deco mesh at 33 inches. And then do every other one with ribbon tails and cut your ribbon tails at 12 inches instead of eight. That's what I would do on my next one. And also I get lots of requests for wreaths that will go in between like screen doors. So I think this one would be a good one because it's not as fluffy as the last two Valentine's Day yards, ah, I can't talk yardstick door swags that I just made. 
you could make yours a lot fuller than I made mine. I basically moved down about two to three inches and added each ruffle. Now you can push them together closer or you can spread them out and let the yardstick show a little bit. Now I didn't add a lot of decorations to this yardstick door swag. I just added a bow to the top, a bow to the bottom, and then the welcome sign from Michaels. And I did add some hot glue around the pipe cleaners on the back when I got finished. That way I can make sure that they did not slide or move. And then here I am tying a bow for the top. Now the top bow is larger than the bottom bow and you'll want to use ribbon with wire to make your bows because it's just easier to work with and the loops will stand up and the bow will hold its shape better. And I have lots of bow tutorials on my YouTube channel. I have a playlist of bow tutorials so there's all different ways to make bows. I also have lots of yardstick door swag tutorials on my YouTube channel. I love making new ones for each season and holiday and I make one and each one is made just a little bit differently. So if you've been following my channel for very long, you know how much I love making these. Also, if you're new to my channel, these yardstick door swags will also make beautiful centerpieces and garlands. You just kind of change up the placement of the bow and the accessories and you can add LED battery powered lights. There's all kinds of ways to decorate it, decorate them and I have lots of tutorials so just let me know if you're looking for a certain season or holiday and hopefully I can link one for you. After you have the bow the size you want then you're going to want to take a pipe cleaner or some floral wire wrap it nice and tight around the center of your bow don't forget to dovetail the ends and fluff your loops of your bow and then I did change the pipe cleaner out for a piece a piece of 20 gauge floral wire that way I could take the bow and thread it through the deco mesh then go to the back of the yardstick and give the wires a few twists and then cut them off short um, also I wanted to mention that to hang up your yardstick door swag drill a hole in the top of your yardstick and then another tip when you get finished with your swag cover the back with felt I really like the way this method looks on the yardstick. It's different than any of the other yardstick door swags that I have made. So I wasn't a fan of this particular mesh, but I do like the way that it turns out in the end. And then here's my welcome sign that I picked up at Michael's. And then I'm just taking the wires on the bow, threading them on each side of the yardstick, thread the wires through the deco mesh, then go the back and give the wires a few twists, cut them off short and fold them down. And then I just used some twine to attach my welcome sign. You could use some hot glue if you wanted to to hold it in place or some floral wire. This makes the third Valentine's Day yardstick door swag that I have made this January 2022. So if you haven't seen those other two tutorials, I'll link them in the description box for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this door swag.